No, because I, James, the uh, the CVI is what we're calling it, climactic volume right. indicator. The CVI has only been in our trade room for about two to three weeks. We've just been watching it. I'm actually in the process of tuning the default settings to um, help us include it in our trade setup criteria. Okay. I don't do anything real fast, meaning I, we already have something that works and has worked for a long time. I know you guys have probably been to some trade rooms where it seems like every week or two weeks, something new is coming along. Something has changed. Something Now you've got, you were just getting a handle on one thing and now it's something else and it's constantly changing. At least that was my experience. What we do, we've been consistently doing for 10 years, and it never changes. All we do is try to add more confluence, more information to make decision-making easier and more efficient, okay? Okay. Now. What questions do I have? Uh, Albert, I think you had a few things to say, and I'm not sure I was able to address them all. When you get in a car and start driving, are you intimidated by the number of indicators to help you drive that car safely and efficiently? Maybe initially, when you first learn to start driving, no, I don't give a crap about fibs. I think uh, they, I'm uh, sorry, I, I just don't believe in fibs. I mean, they work great until they don't. I tried and tried and tried for years. Um, I'll take floor trader pivots all day long before I'll take fibs particularly on a very small time frame like what we trade, they're not going to be as accurate. And I know there's a lot of information out there about trading FIBS. And I know there's a lot of companies that, that swear by them. But it's kind of like, um, you know, trading these, uh, these chart patterns, you know, these double tops. Man, how many of you have tried trading double tops? Works great when it works. Terrible when it doesn't. I am too much crash due to make you crash. Don't figure. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't understand, Alan. All right, Dean. Well, thanks for coming. Uh, pretty much the same. Now, volume profile is okay, Miles, but it's kind of overused for one thing. Uh, another thing, you can't really use it on a short time frame like us, okay, like what we're doing, okay? We're trading. You know, my trade, if I'm in a trade more than two minutes, that's rare. I'm going to be trading in a very tight range. Price is going to drop into an area where price is getting exhausted and the um, the buyers or sellers are, are jumping in and taking control. That may or may not reach an area using the, your volume profile. So that's going to be better for a longer term type trade. No, I do not trade Forex. I don't like the trading against my broker. I don't like the spreads. I think it's, I think <laughs> I have a very low opinion of Forex. And we have an awful lot of reformed Forex traders that come and trade with us because uh, it's really, really hard to make any money with Forex.
love to know price before I go for CMB. Oh, uh, climactic volume indicator. Yeah, we'll email that out to you, Dean. Yes. One minute chart only. I have, here's, <laughs> and this is funny, Gareth. I had 12 monitors trying to take one trade, 12 monitors worth of information to take one winning trade. I now have one monitor and I look at six different instruments on that one monitor and the other monitor has my trading domes on it. I have two monitors now and I can trade so much more successfully when I've removed all that superfluous data that had so much value to me, I hated to let it go. I hated to let it go. Yeah, I'm, I'm I, Forex is, I don't know anybody personally that's ever had a great experience with Forex. Um, I'm sure they're out there. But the problem with Forex is there's an awful lot of people trading Forex because it's a very low barrier to entry. You can start a Forex account with 50 bucks and you're off and trading. You're good. You're trading. So it's a very low barrier to entry. So it's very appealing to people. The reason they do this is because your brokers are getting rich off of you, off of the spread. And, it, and it's unregulated. So I'm just not uh, I just I'm not a I don't believe in Forex now that being said we have people using our indicators trading Forex and they seem to like it hi James thanks for coming yeah, we'll get you some information out there soon. Here's the thing, Benjamin. Um, as far as how many markets are best to trade, you want to get, it's just like anything else. You want to start slow. You don't want to over you know, overwhelm yourself. You don't want to do too much. You want to start with the ones that are, are going to make the most sense for you. For most people that come into our trade room, I'm going to say most of them start with like the NQ or the NASDAQ. So you could start there. It's funny. We do trade the ES in the trade room. Okay, Peter, thanks for coming. We do trade the uh, ES in the trade room. All right, it's there. It's on the chart. And why do we have it on the chart? We have it on the chart because most people believe, based on all of the, the uh, conventional wisdoms, all of the information that we've been sucking up on the Internet, that we believe that the ES is the place to trade. So we have that in the trade room just to entice people to come in to see how do they trade the ES. Truth be told, we actually have it in there as a leader. We want you to come in to see that so you can see how we're killing it on the NQ, the YM, the RTY, the CL, and the GC. You get a lot more better opportunities on those instruments than you do on the ES. Okay, so, oop, that scrolled off. Let me let me go back and see if I can finish reading that one. Okay, Albert, currently I'm trading NASDAQ. Just looking for resistances and support in one-minute chart. I saw in a back testing there is a 60% go to the same direction when they're broken. But I didn't see very much how these indicators can help me. Um, I would have to see exactly what it is you're doing. To, to show you how they can help you. What we're trying to do is, sure, you can use our indicators to either trade the way we're trading 
or we do have a lot of traders that use our indicators to help them scale out of trades because we can tell when price is stopping and turning and changing directions. Now, if you don't see how that helps you, I'm not sure what, what else I could show you. We can tell you with a high degree of probability when price is going to stop and change directions. I would think that would be something you would want to know, but if it doesn't help, that's fine. Okay, Salvador, very interesting statement. This is not for people looking to become more profitable. This, if you remember the name of this webinar, it was um, how I solved my trading problems. For those people that have been trading for very long, chances are they've identified that they have a problem. Okay, that they can get to about 60% profitability and that's about or 60% winning trades, which ultimately ends up not being profitable because of, uh, you know, it depends on the criteria of the trade. Um, but people can get around 60% generally pretty easily and they feel like, oh, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. But they never get there. Okay, so they feel that they're close to profitable but they're no more profitable than you are. What we're trying to show you is there is an entirely different way of approaching trading than what you're probably learned on the internet or what you've heard of before. There is a different way. There are no indicators in the world that are going to make you win you're the trader the indicators indicate when conditions exist that are usually conducive to something happening so the more indicators that tell you that something is about to happen with a high degree of probability the higher the probability that thing is actually going to happen. So your statement is actually opposite. People who are not profitable and have never been profitable are our best customers. They're the people that usually say to us, man, I wish I found you 10 years ago. Okay, but don't start looking for indicators to make you profitable. Indicators don't do that. Indicators indicate you're the trader. You have to decide. Um, Gareth, eight is, eight is solid now. You got some old, you've got some old information there. Eight is solid, and it's do it really is so much better than seven. Um, if you're interested in in doing what we're doing, I can help set everything up for you on Ninja Eight. I can get it all set up for you. I, I'll remotely connect to your computer, get all the indicators on there, set up the charts, do everything for you, um, and uh, we can go from there. But now I think. I think you uh, you should go to eight. Yeah, we have a trading room. It uh, it's every Monday through Friday from nine a.m. until noon Eastern time. Um, you know, it's been so long, David, in answering your question. Every little thing helped a little bit. And when you 
keep adding confluences and you add a little bit, it starts to become a lot. So, yeah, th when I said killing it, I mean relative to, to what I was doing in the past. I was becoming regularly and consistently profitable. I, I wasn't making a ton of money, but I wasn't losing any more. Okay? I wasn't losing money. I, for the first time, started seeing my trading account grow. Now, there's a whole lot more to my story. And I may write a book someday. I probably should. But there's a lot of, maybe I'll just do a long webinar about my story and that way I can go ahead and just get it out there. I've gotten it out there for so many years. Um, but there's a, there's a lot to know about what I've been through, what I've done, how I got there, um, and the mindset that it took me to get there and how my mindset changed. Um, but each time, to go back to your question, each time that I added a layer of confluence, it added another piece of information that maybe I started getting, I don't know, 5 10% better trades. And then I added another one, then maybe 5 or 10% better or more. Okay, so killing it was relative to what I had been doing it in the past. But at that point, I wasn't ready to trade full-time for a living. But I was certainly gaining some traction. Yeah, here's the thing. Um, uh, hit us up on the website, Alan. Uh, there's a little chat on the bottom right corner of, of every page of the website. Or you can send us an email at support at the intentional trader .com. Oh, Connor's already there. Sorry. Connor's got you. So, yeah, we'll show you what we're doing in the trade room. The whole idea of letting people come into our trade room is not to teach them what we're doing. Because it's a trade room. We're trading. That's not a teaching room. We have other venues for that. We have other uh, stuff for that. You can come in and watch and listen and you can ask questions but we're not we're there we trade together we're a group of traders that trade together um, <clears throat> the idea of you coming and watching is so you can see the opportunities for you not that by the end of a week you should be able to be trading what we're trading like I said trading is a lot of hard work it takes practice a lot of practice continued practice okay so, yes, certainly you can come and hang out with us and ask questions. But remember, we're there trading and, uh, and, and not teaching. Okay, I'm not there to teach you. We do have a bunch of information um, that uh, you can read up before you come so you understand. Albert, absolutely. I sent you a uh, – Connor, there we go. There's a link to our trade of the day videos. There's 126 of them. After watching about five of them, you'll start to understand, hey, these indicators are really easy to understand what's going on. The cool thing is, is if you watch five of them, by the time you've watched 100 of them, you'll feel like you've watched five of them over and over and over again because it's the same setup. It's the same thing. It's, the, it, it's so repetitive that it's boring. Yeah, all these URLs will be emailed to you that Connor's putting in here. Or, or they'll, if you're watching the recording, it'll be down in the description down below. RECVI, have you tested a model with CVI that looks at the mix of all prior open trades over time that are exiting at climatic volume point? 
example, a majority of open positions over the accumulated week are now reversing from signaling. You could absolutely test that, Rob. I have not because that doesn't that doesn't go along with what we trade. I develop these indicators for our traders for our trade room. That's not to say that we don't have an awful lot of people buying our indicators off of our website to be used inside of their own trading system to do what whatever it is that they're trying to accomplish. And so for that exact thing, you could absolutely set it up to test that. Yeah, well, our trading doesn't get more boring, to be honest. And and I have actually said this uh, to people, and, and it surprises some people. So it took, I struggled at learning trading for seven years, and then I started getting good at it. And, and then I started getting to the point where I was kind of tired of it. Now, here's why. I was a contractor for many years because I liked solving problems. And I like the the act of taking something and cre taking nothing and creating something. So the process of creation was what appealed to me. The um, working with my my crews. I was a hands-on kind of contractor. I didn't just ride around in a truck. I well, I did at the end because I was too beat up and whatever um, but for the longest time I was a hands-on guy and uh, um, so I liked working with my guys I like watching them progress from maybe a laborer to working them and teaching them how to be a one of my lead guys you know and uh, and going through all of that I got a lot of fulfillment out of that um, but just like with running any business, you know, you kind of get burned out on that after 20 years. I was ready to be done with that. I saw this trading thing and I thought, well, that looks easy. I could just relax now and just wake up in the morning, trade for a couple hours. I don't have to deal with crews. I don't have to deal with customers. I don't have to deal with all these. I don't have to get in the truck. I don't have to go to the traffic. Don't have to mess with supply, all that stuff. I can just trade by myself quietly in a quiet room so that was appealing to me at the time so that's what I started doing I started trying to learn and anyway long story short I got to a point where you know I'd probably quit this too now if I didn't have you guys if I didn't have a trade room full of people that I can trade with every day if I didn't have this developing uh, constantly developing the the uh, indicators to make things better for you guys um, I probably would quit trading if that's if waking up trading was all I had to look forward to during the day I probably wouldn't do it anymore because I need that sense of creation you know or that fulfillment of taking somebody who's who's relatively new at something and making them better okay so we call that teaching I guess or mentoring or whatever that's where I really enjoyed the construction process in fact I'm still in touch with a lot of those guys that I did that with they've all started their own businesses one of them actually bought my business from me um, and uh, last time I was in Atlanta I hired one of them to come over and do a bunch of work on my house so that that's really fulfilling for me trading just in and of itself just grinding out an income isn't that fulfilling for me but that's what a lot of people want to do and I understand and it can it has generated a lifestyle for me that I would never trade okay I would never trade it because I I don't have a lifestyle that's that's very different than most people meaning I get to travel a lot as long as I have internet access I could travel anywhere I want and uh, my wife and I hit the road and then travel for weeks or months at a time yeah so I feel like I got kind of lucky David um, 
like I said, when I came up, when I when I did solve my trading problems, I was I was quitting. I was done. I was giving up. So the whole thing about wiping the slate clean and starting from scratch was an experiment that I wanted to do. I, I thought about it for a long time, but I never had the guts to do it because I was still trying to learn or I was I was so close to being profitable or my trading system was so close. I was just needed that. Oh man, I was just oh, right there, but I couldn't quite get over the hump. So I, I never really wanted to just quit and wipe the slate clean. So I was about to quit because I'd run myself out of money yet again. And I thought, okay, well, now's the time to do that experiment that you thought about doing. Rather than just quitting, let's just try that experiment. Let's wipe the slate clean and let's start from nothing. And let's try to solve this as a problem. And if that fails, which I'm sure it will because everything else has, then I'm done. You know what's interesting? And, I, and that's, that's where I've been extremely lucky. She actually talked me out of quitting more times than I can count. She had faith in me when she shouldn't have. She absolutely shouldn't have. Um, but she knew how hard I was working at it. And she, for whatever reason, thinks I'm smart sometimes. <laughs> sometimes not so much. But, uh, yeah, she hung in there and she never wanted me to quit. I was the one that kept wanting to quit. And she said, now you got to keep going. And uh, so it wouldn't have happened without her for sure. And she's she's feeling the benefits of it at this point because we get to, you know, travel and have a lot of fun. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm glad you glad you're hanging in there. Yeah, that's and that's one of the things that kept me going. I had never failed at anything either. So what is it about this trading thing? Why am I not why am I able to be so successful? I had to, I also had two hot tub stores when I had my construction business and they were both doing great. And and the construction business was doing great and everything was going great. And then I try this trading thing and I said, Why is it I can do all that and I can't do this? And the answer came back to me was, well, you're not approaching trading like a business. You aren't doing it like a business. You're still approaching it like you're trying to learn something. So I thought, well, what if I, that was another experiment. What if I, what if I approached it like it was my only source of income? It was my only business. So that started changing the way I was thinking about things. That started a big change for me. When I started approaching trading like a business and thinking of it as a business, that started some wheels turning. That kind of got my juices flowing again. That changed my perspective on what it was I needed to do. First thing you need to do in business every month is pay your bills, right? So I started thinking, well, what if I could just generate enough money this month to pay my water bill? And that's it. Of course, there's a lot more that goes into it. We have this whole transition plan that we give to our Einsteins. Uh, but we'll, we can help you transition from part-time trader or learning trader to full-time trader. Um, it's a process. You don't just stop trading one day or, or stop your, quit your job one day and start trading the next day for a living. You've got to transition. You've got to prove to yourself that you can do it and that you can do it consistently. Okay.
yeah, we all have those learning experiences. And boy, this this uh, this trading thing is, will really work the ego over, won't it? Whales. Uh, I have no idea, Rob. No idea. That's awesome, David. Glad to hear it. You mind if we use your quote? Connor's collecting quotes from <laughs> he's building a new website. <laughs> he may just throw that quote on your web on our website. I'm glad it helped. Yeah, I, you know, I can't do it in every event. I can't um, um, try to give insights and enlighten people. Um, in every event, but I do have a different perspective and I do, I, I come from both sides. I know the pain. I remember the pain of struggling and failing. I remember it so clearly. And I know what it takes now to get to the other side. And there are some things that are not immediately obvious. Now, David, if you look back, on what you were doing before 2013, doesn't what you're doing now seem so obvious? I mean, it's, it seems very obvious now, right? But it didn't occur to you before maybe I mentioned it. But it makes so much sense. And that's my struggle with trying to get that message out to other people. Is it is really obvious. Have you ever, like, there's three people, it's, and I feel this way all the time. There's three people in a group talking. And you're one of the three, except you're mostly just listening. And the other two people are having this conversation back and forth. And you know they're both misunderstanding each other, right? You know what one of them means, you know what the other one means, and you realize that the two of them don't know what each other means. You ever have, you ever been in one of those conversations? I feel like that when I'm talking to people about what I've been through. I know what I've been through. I know what you're going through. I know what you, what, what problems you're having. I know what pains you're having. I know the struggles. I know how you feel like an idiot sometimes. Um, I, I know that you're wondering about your own sanity. I know that you think you're the world's worst trader and that everybody else is so much smarter than you. I mean, I know these things. I know the pain you're feeling. So I understand that. And I understand what it takes to get to the other side of that. And it does take a good a bit of work. But uh, we have defined the work that needs to be done. All you got to do is just do the work. Um, so that's why I feel like I'm talking to a lot of you that you think you're alone. You think I couldn't possibly know or understand what you've been through. And I know this because I would go to trade rooms or talk to, or listen to webinars or whatever. And I'm thinking, well, this guy's not talking to me. Because this guy is some used to be a floor trader, or he's got some degree in finance, or he's got some whatever. Whoever I was listening to at the time never understood the struggles I was having. And, and so I would always listen and think, well, all that sounds good, but he doesn't understand what I'm going through. So how am I going to get there? So I, I, I figured out some things. And I teach that to our Einstein people, and I love hearing how how much it does help them. And, and again, in hindsight, it's like, well, of course it, of course that's easy. Why didn't I think of that? It's not rocket science. It's just that I had some moments of clarity about trading. Well, <laughs> do it. Go ahead, Connor will copy it, and it may end up on the website.
Yeah, I, I probably should. It's only a matter of time. Um, and I've considered that. That would go right in hand with writing a book. That would go, that, that would have to, ha I've, I've considered that. Again, it's that, that process of creation that I would enjoy that. Um, the problem is just time. You know, it, it would just take me a lot of time to develop something like that. I do have a mentoring course uh, that we have. Um, it's very specific to what we do, though. It's for our traders in our in our trade room, and and for our uh, um, the uh, the Einsteins. Uh, it's called the Trader RX 2.0. And it's a mentoring program, and it and uh, so a lot of the stuff that I teach about the business stuff and all that, it's all in the program, but it's specifically related to what we trade and how we trade. No, I don't have a tick target, but I like the I like the frame of your question. Because you didn't ask me if I have a daily money target. And the reason I like the way you frame the question is, is because I specifically have removed money from my trading. I specifically did that very early on in this process of turning things around. Uh, money, as I said earlier, makes me do stupid things, makes me make bad decisions, it makes me feel bad, it makes me do bad things. Um, I have a very, apparently, very poor relationship with money as it relates to trading. So I would do all of those things. I would grudge trade, I would panic trade, I would do all those things I swore I would never do. So I thought, well, I am, because I have this uh, mental disability, it's just what I thought. I'm going to remove money from the trading. And instead of trading for money each day or money goals, money targets, or ticks, which in my mind is just money, um, I'm going to instead count wins and losses. And these are wins and losses of trades that are um, that I manage properly throughout the trade. Okay, so I, I would manage the trade to its logical conclusion, whether it's a full winner or partial winner or loser or whatever. If it was a winner, it goes in the win column. If it was a loser, it goes in the lose column. All right. And I trade still to this day net three winning trades. When I say net three, I mean if I lose the first trade, I got to win the next four. Okay, so that would be net three winning trades. When I hit net three winning trades, I have a, a, a set of uh, domes. I use the super dome for trading. I have two workspaces open. One has my sim domes up and the other has my um, live domes up. And I'll just switch over to the live, do uh, switch from the live to the sim. All right, and I will finish trading the trading session in SIM when I hit my target for the day or my stop for the day. I also stop trading live if I hit a negative three, net minus three, which, by the way, for those of you that are traders here in our trade room, if you haven't all left already, how often do I hit my loss target? If you're here, anybody still here? I do hit it. I do hit my loss target. Not very often. Maybe, maybe twice a month. Maybe. Um. On average, I'm going to say, and I, again, I'll let my traders uh, jump in and they can say, but I'm going to say like five trades a day on average.
Yeah, Frank, that's kind of the idea. Learn to trade something small. Learn to just take small wins, but then start adding contracts, not pip. I mean, we trade, we have trade futures. So um, instead of trading one contract, now trade two and go for that same small target. And instead of two, trade three. Build your account. Keep doing the same thing. Don't try to do more and more and more and more. Just keep doing the same thing and get and become the best in the world at it. Yeah, I'd love to hear that, David. It's always nice to hear from from folks that have, have had a positive experience from us, whether it's through trading our system or or just from um, from the insights that I try to give. I mean, I, I have a lot of them, so it takes a while. <laughs> We're waiting on you, Tim. We're just standing around waiting on you. We're just talking about you and just saying, well, you know, that Tim guy, he's going to show up someday. Well, I work at it, Gareth. I mean, this isn't something I do two hours a day and walk away. Trading is, we stop trading at noon. That doesn't mean we stop working at noon. That means that's when, that's that it's time to go back over and do your trade analysis. What'd you do right? What'd you do wrong? What uh, what needs to change in your trade plan? What what uh, what do you need to study about your personal trade setups? Um, your business plan, your your trade plan. Your um, so you need to work on that stuff. You need to work on your practice sessions. We teach you how to practice. We give you tools to practice with. So you need to be practicing two to three hours a day after your live trading. You can't just, you can't, think about it as a professional athlete, okay? These guys don't go, okay, well, I know how to, I know how to catch a football now, so I'll just show up for the games. You've got to continue to practice and work at it every single day. And the work is what happens after trading, okay? Trading is what I consider game time. That's when you put all the work to, to work, right? That's, that's when you put all of your preparations and your practice to work is during game time, during trading hours. After hours is when the hard work happens. Yeah, trade plan is not is is never finished. Whoops, I'm not sure if I turned that off. A trade plan is never finished. I used to <laughs> I used to go Google trade plan, and I would read. How, I bet some of you have done this. You Google trade plan, and you look or or trade plan template, right? So you Google trade plan template. And you start looking at the template and you go, oh, there's what I like. And you fill in the blanks and you go, bing, I got a trade plan. And off on the shelf it goes. And you go, okay, I got a trade plan. What's next? I did that a lot. And then I never really had a trade plan. It was just some a form I filled out and put on a shelf. So... I, uh, I teach people also, again, to our Einsteins, we teach them how to build a, a proper trade plan, how to approach it. Uh, no, I have not seen that, Rob, but not to say that it doesn't exist. But we have, we trade in a very, again, a very tight time frame. So what you're looking at is is using the CVI to create support and resistance. Right? Yeah, no, I don't use it for support and resistance.
right? Yeah, because we want to luck into it, David. That's why we do it. We want to. We're so many of us are playing roulette when we're when we're trading. You just hope that ball starts spinning around, and you hope that you win. How many of you are putting on trades, and every time you put on a trade, you hope it wins? Yeah, so yeah, here's the thing, Gareth. Our, what is your what is your intentions with trading? Um, that's one of the things that you need to understand about yourself. And that's one of the things and I reason I say that is because after seven years of trying, I'm still not sure what my intentions were. I thought I wanted to make a living at trading. Uh, and and then I realized, well, if I want to make a living at trading, I better treat it as a business and not like a hobby because I realized the way I was approaching trading was as a hobbyist. And now there's and, – and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being a hobbyist. And David brought this, this good point up. There's nothing wrong with being a hobbyist as long as that's as you understand you're a hobbyist. Okay, you can't you can't treat something like a hobby and expect to make what a professional's going to make. So you have to understand what it is you want out of trading, what you can devote to it. Whether that falls under hobbyist or professional, and then adjust your expectations. Because if you've identified that you don't have a certain level of concentration and you can't spend enough time with it, go ahead and, and approach it as a hobbyist, but adjust your expectations and know you're never going to generate a regular or consistent income that you may be able to live on. You're just not going to be able to. So just understand that, but still trade and enjoy the trading. I mean, have fun with it. A lot of people do it just out of sheer enjoyment. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Falling out of airplanes is one of them. You can't really make a lot of money falling out of airplanes. Okay, well, I, I'm sure we can help you with that. We actually have an entire program for that if if you're looking for some help if you'd like to have a private conversation with me and we can talk about all that I'm happy to do that whenever you have some time um, as I say I've been through all that and uh, I have some insight on how you can do that <laughs> I wish I could make it easy for you all I can do is provide the best tools that I can and teach you how to use those tools. The rest of it is up to you. I use this analogy a lot. Um, I would buy uh, a compound miter saw. So maybe I bought two compound miter saws for my crews, right? And I'd send off two guys to trim out two different houses using this compound miter saw. And I would get two totally different results all dependent upon the experience the guy had using the saw, how much he cared, how hard he worked at it, um, versus some new guy, didn't really care, was just trying to get through the work uh, and get it done. And uh, uh, But the saw was the same. It was the exact same saw. But I could get different results. So I can provide the tools for you. 
and I can teach you how to use them. But it's up to you to do the work to learn how to use them and to become proficient with them. <laughs> I don't know where that is. It's uh, it's on YouTube somewhere. Connor knows where it is. I don't know where it is. I need to do another one. We're currently traveling right now. We left that location. Just left Moab a couple of days ago. We're in now Ure, Colorado. Headed to Albuquerque and then to Dallas. So, yeah, we, uh, we're actually on the road traveling right now. Yeah, okay, Harry. So, that's a good question. The um, when you first start trading with us, you're going to want to use limit orders because we have very small targets, and you can take two or three ticks of slippage on a on a market order, which you don't want to do on small targets. Now, on market orders, you're not going to necessarily get filled every time. But that's okay initially. You've got to just work your way through that. Eventually, over time, you can start trading the way I do as you build up experience and you build up your account, okay? And you build up your confidence. You build up your consistency. All this thing, all this happens over time. And when that happens, you start adding more contracts. So I got to a point where I wasn't getting re really good fills. So I figured out a way of scaling into trades. I do have some a little bit of teaching on that, not a lot, but a little bit of that in our fast forward program using the Superdomes. People are always asking me, Tony, how do you do it? How do you do it? How do you do it? Well, if I taught people how to do what I do without them having the experience that I have, um, and the work, and have, and I know how hard they've worked and all that. Then I could be setting them up to get slaughtered because you really need to have, you need to work your way up to the ability to do what I do, and that is to scale in using a combination of limited market orders. Okay, so not a big deal, um, but it takes time. So I want everybody to start with limit orders. Okay. Um, Rob, the best thing for you to Rob, the best thing for you to do is just to contact Connor. Just hit him up at support at the intentional trader dot com and he'll work with you any way that he can. <laughs> any way that he can without getting fired. That's right. <laughs> you guys think he works for me. I Trust me, it's the other way around. I'm just the mouthpiece. He runs the show. Excellent. Well, anyway, we, we can work with you, Gareth. You just let us know. You too. I think this is a good place to call it quits. Uh, we've been at this for two hours now, believe it or not. Uh, we don't usually go this long, but uh, had some great questions. Uh, enjoy talking with all of you folks. Enjoy hearing about your successes, David. That's great. That makes it all worthwhile for me sometimes to to get that. You know, I can be having everybody has a tough week every now and then, uh, or you know whatever, and I'll get an email, and man, it's a real pick-me-up when I get emails from people that tell me about how they're doing and thanking me and, and whatever. Um, it really does make a difference, even though I don't um, I don't ask for those. I do get them a lot, and uh, I probably don't uh, send a long, drawn-out response to it, but I do like getting them, and I'm thankful for that. Uh, it makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, me too. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a, it's a fun life, Rob. It's a fun life traveling and, and trading is what makes that possible. The trading in and of itself kind of sucks, but it, it, uh, it has created a lifestyle that I wouldn't change. All right, everybody, thanks for coming again. Anything we can do to help you, you let us, let us know. Um, we're always at support at theintentionaltrader.com, or if you want to chat with us online, just go on our website, bottom corner of all the pages. You can hit us up on chat and chat with us live. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you all soon.